Welcome to Channel's GFP12 GOAT Fiber Pedestal Installation Video. The new GOAT GFP12 is a high-performance fiber distribution pedestal providing field-proven protection for any outside plant application. The GFP12 has a 12 by 12 inch footprint. Let's take a look at the steps of the construction side of the GFP12 installation. Remove the cover from the base by releasing the locking mechanism with a 7 16 inch can wrench. You'll find a complement of universal splice trays mounted to a metal backplane that includes a basket on the front for splicing slack and cable attachment points. The setup kit includes the following. Eight cable ties for use with the splice trays. Two alcohol wipes to clean fiber and surfaces. An additional splice chip that holds six single fiber splices. A splitter holder in case you need to add additional splitters. A piece of blue felt to protect the buffer tubes as they transition onto the splice tray. Two pieces of transition tubing that have been pre-cut to go from tray to tray and a bolt and washer. This is not used in GOAT installations. For this demo, we have already prepared our main line cable by creating a mid-sheath opening of 12 feet. One side of the main line cable has already been attached. Let's look at the other side being attached now. The strength member is cut to length using side cutters so it looks like this. The main line cable needs to be high enough so the buffer tubes are not crushed when you attach the cable ties. When using a high capacity main line cable like we're using in this demonstration, you may have to reduce the diameter of the strength member so it'll fit under the bolt and washer of the CTM attachment point. The reduced diameter strength member is placed under the bolt and washer of the CTM attachment and tightened using a 7 16 inch can wrench. Next, two cable ties are added to secure the main line cable to the back plane at the cable tie-down point. Cut the loose ends of the cable ties flush with the knuckle using your side cutters. Now, it's time to separate the buffer tube to be accessed at this location. In this demonstration, we'll be isolating the yellow buffer tube. The yellow buffer tube is passed through the pass-through slot from the main cable side to the drop side of the goat fiber pedestal for splicing. The excess buffer tubes are stored neatly within the slack basket tabs on the back of the pedestal and cable ties are added securing them. On the front side of the pedestal, loosen the hook and loop splice tray strap and store the tray support. Tuck the hook and loop strap out of the way so you can work with the buffer tube. The trays are folded down so they're out of the way. Route the buffer tube you're working with into the slack basket and loop it to take up the slack. Next, route the buffer tube into the tray in preparation for a mid sheath. Open up the buffer tube exposing the fibers according to your company specifications. Now that the fibers have been exposed, Remove the tray cover on the tray. Insert four cable ties in the tray slots in preparation for securing the buffer tubes. Attach felt tape to both sides of the buffer tube. Lay both sides of the buffer tube into the tray and secure it with two cable ties on each side of the tray. Cut the tails of the cable ties. Here is a nice view of the buffer tubes laying in the tray. Felt tape has been applied to the buffer tubes. Two cable ties on each side secure the tube to the tray and the loose ends of the cable ties have been trimmed. The fiber is routed inside the tray in preparation for splicing. Prepare your fiber in the tray and splice to the splitter inputs according to company standards and specifications. At this point, splicing is complete, and it's time to replace the tray cover. The tray support chip is placed back on the hook and loop tray strap. All trays are lifted up into place, and the strap is tightened. 
Let's look at the steps for installing a branch cable in the GFP12 goat fiber pedestal. For this demo, we've already prepared our lateral or branch cable to a length of 5 feet. Cut the strength member to length using side cutters so it looks like this. The branch cable needs to be high enough so the buffer tubes are not crushed when you attach the cable ties. The strength member is placed under the bolt and washer of the CTM attachment and tightened using a 7 16 inch can wrench. Next, two cable ties are added to secure the branch cable to the cable tie down point. Trim the loose ends of the cable ties at the knuckles using your side cutters. The buffer tube of the branch cable is now routed behind the stored buffer tubes of the mainline cable and through the pass-through slot to the front of the GOAT fiber pedestal. On the front of the fiber pedestal, loosen the hook and loop tray strap and remove the tray support. Tuck the strap out of the way. Lower the trays and loop the branch cable buffer tube around the slack basket tabs to take up the slack. Remove the tray cover in preparation for splice tray setup. Open up the blue buffer tube exposing the fibers according to company specifications. Now that the fibers have been exposed, you'll secure the buffer tubes to the tray using felt tape and cable ties. Two cable ties are inserted into the slots where the buffer tube enters the tray. Felt tape is applied to the buffer tube so it can be safely tie-wrapped to the tray. The fiber is laid inside the tray in preparation for splicing. The cable ties are tightened and the ends are trimmed with side cutters. Prepare your fiber in the tray and splice according to company standards and specifications. At this point, splicing is complete, and it's time to replace the tray cover and lift up the splice trays. The tray support is put back on the tray strap, and the strap is tightened, securing the trays. Let's look at the steps for the distribution side of the GFP12 GOAT fiber pedestal installation where drop cables are installed. Drop cables are attached to the GOAT fiber pedestal on the front side. We've already prepared a drop cable cut to a minimum of 6 feet. The strength member of the drop cable is held up to the CTM clamp and measured. The strength member is cut to fit and slid under the bolt and washer. The CTM bolt is tightened using a 7 16 inch can wrench or nut driver. Two cable ties are put on the drop cable at the tie down point and trimmed. Now it's time to route the drop cable buffer tube. Loosen the hook and loop tray strap and remove the tray support. Tuck the tray strap out of the way. The buffer tube is wrapped around the slack basket twice and held next to the tray. The tray cover is removed and the location of the buffer tube is marked. At this point, the buffer tube of the drop cable will be opened and the fiber prepared per company standards. Now that the buffer tube is opened, it's time to secure the buffer tube in the tray. Two cable ties are inserted into the tray slots where the buffer tube will enter the tray. Felt tape is applied to the buffer tube and the tube is brought to the tray. The two cable ties are tightened and then trimmed with side cutters. Route and splice the fiber for this drop cable location according to company specifications. Now that your splicing of the drop cable is complete, the tray cover is replaced and all trays are lifted back up into place. The tray support is placed back on the hook and loop strap and the trays are secured with the strap. 
Now place the goat cover back over the base unit and push it down. The cover will self-lock on the base. This completes the distribution side of the GFP12 goat fiber pedestal installation. Repeat these steps for as many drops as needed. Thank you for watching.